हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आय हॉस्पिटल एंड पी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया एंड इन दिस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वीडियो आई एल बी स्पीकिंग अबाउट अ केस ऑफ पोस्ट्रियोपोलर कैटरैक एंड इंटरऑपरेटिव फ्लूड मिसडिरेक्शन विच हैपन ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ द इवेंट्स एंड हाउ टू डू द विट्रे स्टैप सो दिस अ केस थर्टी फाइव ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल पोस्ट्रिपोलर कैटरैक यूनिलैट्रल कैटरैक विथ माओपिया एंड यू कैन सी द ओपैसिटीज which can be observed on the anterior hyoid these opacities are behind the posterior capsule so we expect that uh, there is a breach in the posterior capsule so we start off the case the anterior ccc has to be well centered and target the size of less than 4.8 mm to have best optic capture in the event of loss of posterior capsule and uh, another option is to do a oval rexis of course no hydro dissection only hydro delineation is performed because if there is a pre existing breach in the posterior capsule it may open up if you do forceful hydro dissection now as i was doing hydro procedure i noted that there was progressive shallowing of the anterior chamber and as i tried to push ovd i realized that ac had become in fact more shallow and the intraocular pressure was also rising now that's not fair because i had prepared myself to tackle posterior polar cataract but this was another problem happening as i noted that intraocular pressure was rising and ac was further shallowing i stopped the procedure i tried to again form the chamber with ovd and try to tap the nucleus thinking that there might be fluid trapped in the bag so i tried to burp it out but it was not so so i made the diagnosis of intraoperative fluid misdirection and if you want to watch or learn more about this you can watch my video on fluid deviation so basically the fluid was trapped in the burger space behind the posterior capsule so i planned pars plana vitrectomy and i made a opening in the sclera 4 mm after giving subconjunctival anesthesia and what i noted here is that the moment i entered the vitreous cavity there was gush of fluid so this was the trap fluid which came out through this uh, scleral incision and immediately iop reduced and anterior chamber now could be formed very easily with 2% methyl cellulose so if i had continued with, without doing the pars plana tap there was a risk of acute intraoperative rock hard ice syndrome which would have made things even difficult in the case of posterior cataract so the necessary steps were taken to remove the nucleus no rotation of the nucleus there just doing division and then aspirating the two half of the nucleus this is a soft cataract so no problem with that and always maintaining low iop in the chamber around 60 to 70 cm of bottle height always do fluid visco exchange in order to avoid shallowing of the anterior chamber and then i am using by manual here so that i can release the cortex 360 degree before removing the central plaque because when you remove the central plaque that is the time when you can have a posterior capsular rupture or anterior hyoid rupture so at that time there should be very minimal lens matter which is remaining in the bag that will be easier to manage so always release the cortex from all over and then you try to tackle the posterior plaque at the end now you can see the posterior plaque has is detached now from the posterior capsule keeping the low bottle height or low iop prevents sudden opening of the anterior hyoid or the posterior capsular rupture so you have to be very gradual using low vacuum settings and bottle height of 60 to 70 cm only that will slow down the procedure a bit but that will be very safe for the posterior capsule as you can see as i have removed the posterior plaque you can see that there is a pre existing breach in the posterior capsule right there now uh, i don't know how the margins are if there are fibros that's good they will be strong but here i decided to convert it into a posterior capsular axis 
also I wanted to take out some amount of those opacities you can see here that I am making another tear at the edge of the pre-existing tear there so that I can hold this tear with microcapsular axis forceps it is very important during posterior capsular axis that you maintain the anterior chamber there should be never shallowing of the anterior chamber as it may lead to rupture of the anterior hyloid as it prolapses out and making a small posterior capsular axis there it's complete now and now I'm just checking it with a tramsalon there and as you can see there is a burger space just behind this opening of the posterior capsule and uh, on one side you can see that the hyloid is breached probably because of the MVR entry that I made and through that area the tramsalon has trickled down into the vitreous but luckily there is no vitreous entering the anterior chamber at this point that is what is commonly seen with posterior polar cataract that the anterior hyloid remains intact so the prolapse of the vitreous is less common if you tackle it with low IOP during all the maneuvers so now I am going to place the PCL in the bag so first I place it in the anterior chamber and then I push the haptics right into the bag avoiding excess pressure over the posterior capsule now the visco is being removed and this is at the end of the surgery you can see the posterior CCC there and few opacities are there at its margin and there is triamcelone which has gone into the vitreous this is uh, immediately post operative after 3 hours you can see that uh, the posterior capsule axis can be very well defined right at the center and there is anterior capsule axis as well and those were the opacities in the anterior hyloid or over the anterior hyloid phase this is post operative day 7 you can see the opacities have reduced if it causes any visual problems we can always do YAG laser after a couple of months or three months and uh, at the day 30 you can see that the opacities are now getting smaller and smaller getting partially absorbed so this is the anterior CCC margin opacities of the anterior hyloid and you can see nicely done posterior capsule rexis there so very interesting case case of posterior polar cataract with pre-existing posterior capsular breach and Additionally, there was fluid deviation or misdirection at the start of the surgery and how the vitreous tap helped in doing the rest of the surgery uneventfully. These are very important tips and tricks which uh, are needed for your regular surgeries. Thank you so much for watching.